Among the numerous spies of World War II, one name stood apart from the others. The Nazis were terrified of this one woman, a limping lady. Hundreds of posters with her face were plastered on every corner of France to find her, with text that read, The enemy's most dangerous spy. We must find and destroy her. Was the limping lady able to manage a network to overthrow the German war machine? Or was she unfortunately captured on duty? Even with a limp, what made her so dangerous and most feared by the Gestapo? She was born into a wealthy Baltimore family in 1906. Her mother wanted her to be a noble lady. Her father wanted her to marry into another wealthy family. But Virginia wanted something more. She craved the excitement, the adrenaline rush. Her description of herself was capricious and cantankerous. She even wore a bracelet made of live snakes once to school. Paul wanted to be a diplomat so she could travel the world and seek adventure. So her father got her admitted to the best of institutions, Barnard and Radcliffe Universities. Paul learned German, French, Italian, Spanish, and Russian fluently. But it was hard to hide her accent. After studying language, Virginia traveled to Paris to study. There, she decided to enter diplomacy. Paul aced the diplomat entrance exam, scoring 100%. With her fluency in multiple languages and Ivy League education, she should have moved up with her clerical position. Yet every time there was an opening, her application would mysteriously disappear. This made her decide to secure a position as a secretary in a U.S. consulate in Turkey. Life was perfect for her. That's when the unexpected happened. While out bird hunting, Paul unintentionally shot herself in the foot. She was rushed to the hospital, but unfortunately her left leg had to be amputated below the knee. But Hall made a difficult recovery and learned to walk on a bulky wooden leg. So during World War II, Hall volunteered to operate an ambulance for the French when Nazi Germany invaded France. But as France was overtaken, she was forced to flee Britain. Virginia had to escape through the perilous Pyrenees Mountains in Spain on a trail known as the Freedom Trail. The journey was 44 miles at an elevation of 6,000 feet. Even after suffering from the pain caused by her prosthetic leg, Virginia made it to the other end safely. After an accidental encounter with a spy, Virginia came into contact with British intelligence. This was the beginning of the legend of the limping lady. Is it possible to become a female spy, let alone a most feared one, as an amputee? She journeyed back through the Pyrenees Mountains and set out as a New York Post journalist in France. Hall published secret intelligence gathered from her own spy network. Thanks to her established network, over 2 million people in France gained access to valuable information through these resistance newspapers. She engaged in various activities, including gathering intelligence, coordinating and supporting resistance networks, organizing sabotage operations, and transmitting critical information to allied forces. Her informants ranged from nuns to prostitutes. She initially depended on nuns while staying at a monastery. Then she made friends with a brothel owner. This way, secrets of the German soldiers were leaked to her via the French prostitutes. She outsmarted the German secret police, Gestapo. Plus, to her advantage, none of the Germans believed that a woman could be a spy. Mind you, this is the early 40s. She saved the life of pilots in the downed aircraft and rushed them into safe houses. Together with a French doctor, Virginia planned jail outbreaks to free prisoners of war from Nazi camps and then guided them on the multi-day journey to the UK. The only information the Germans had was that they were after a limping lady. The Gestapo had Hall's picture drawn on wanted posters. The enemy's most dangerous spy. We must find and destroy her, the poster read. They were pressing hard for this woman. And around the end of 1942, it seemed as if Hall was under attack. She had two options in front of her. Trek 100 miles through deep snow and the scary Pyrenees Mountains over three days to flee to Spain. Or take chances with the Nazis. Paul chose the former. And somehow, with one prosthetic leg, she managed to reach Spain. But because her passport lacked the entrance stamp, she was arrested in Spain. At least now she's not in the hands of the Nazis. But after six weeks, she was granted her parole and she returned to Britain. Soon, Virginia became restless. She yearned for the adrenaline rush and wanted to go back to France. But the authorities declined. They believed her mission would be too risky. Her prayers were answered when the American espionage agency was expanding to France. But wouldn't an American lady with one leg easily be recognized among the French? You'll be shocked to hear how far Hall went to step on the field again. She hired a makeup artist to draw wrinkles on her face and a dentist to grind down her beautiful teeth to resemble a French milkmaid. 
On her return to France, Virginia lived as a milkmaid and brought cheese and milk to the German camps. Without suspecting a thing, the German soldiers discussed top secrets in front of her. With this leaked information, Hall helped the Allies compose the bombing of bridges and several Nazi infrastructures throughout France before their arrival on the D-Day. She laid the work for their victory beforehand. Hall was to be honored at the public White House ceremony, but she objected, preferring to remain a secret agent. She was the only civilian woman to obtain the Distinguished Service Cross during World War II. After retiring in 1966, Hall remained silent in public and passed away in Maryland in 1982. Would you ever expect the most feared spy by the Nazis to be a limping lady? Let us know in the comments.